Scoot forward a little bit. Towards you? Uh, no, towards the door. Okay. Good. Okay, now back up towards me. And you should start to feel it right there. And that's it. That's so that's it. the position. This is an MRI machine unlike any you've ever been in. Matthew Rosen and a team of physicists at the Martino Center for Biomedical Imaging hope to bring a new revolution to magnetic resonance imaging by making the scanner small, cheap, and portable. Getting the form factor down opens up applications that we haven't even thought of. I mean, the neuro ICU, the ambulance, uh, military field hospitals, sports arenas. You'd never fit one of today's MRI scanners in the back of an ambulance, and you couldn't afford to anyway. These are typically $3 million machines, and then you need to build a room and an infrastructure to put them in. So that's another, say, $1 million. And so you're talking, let's say, $5 million for a state-of-the-art clinical system. Here's the, here's the sausage factory. So each of these, I don't think we'll be able to hear too much. From our perspective, this is not going to go into a doctor's office uh, unless you can significantly mitigate the power budget. MRIs completely transformed medicine. First developed in the 1970s, it lets doctors peer at the three-dimensional structure of our organs, even seeing through the skull to illuminate hidden corners of the brain. MRI scanners work by generating radio waves from the water molecules in our bodies. They do that with a strong magnetic field, and that field comes from a magnet that can weigh several tons. Our idea was really to take the magnet out of the equation, to turn the magnetic field down as low as possible to make it safe, but also to make it at the same time, cheaper, lighter, and more portable. The scientists figured out how to build an MRI that takes medically useful pictures with a magnetic field 500 times weaker than standard machines. Rosen didn't need to use some exotic new metal to get there. He and his colleagues have built a prototype out of ordinary wires, circuits, and magnets that they keep around the lab. This looks more like a garage shop right. than a, you know, a computer lab. I mean, you Absolutely. guys are really hacking it yourself here. You know, the borders between machining, hardware, electronics, advanced compute, they kind of all blur together as part of this whole idea of image acquisition and reconstruction. Instead of a giant cylinder, their prototype consists of two vertical walls with thin magnets and wires woven into them. The scientist wrote software that allows the magnetic field to change in rapid, complex ways. The radio waves produced by these fields deliver more information about what's in our bodies without a lot of confusing noise. And so if we can acquire just the samples we need, then we can make a short scan even at very low signal-to-noise ratio. To help cut through the noise, they built a better antenna for those radio waves. Rosen and his colleagues wound the antenna into a cap that hugs the head. So you would lay in here, and then our magnetic field points in this direction. And so this coil makes a magnetic field that's perpendicular to our main magnetic field. I feel like Shakespeare, I right? put, this, put this down. <laughs> in just six minutes, the scanner can pick up enough signals to put together an image of the brain. It doesn't have the resolution of a four-ton MRI scanner, but it's good enough to find bleeding, damage from strokes, tumors, and other medically urgent things. Right now, Rosen and his colleagues are still perfecting their prototype. If it someday goes into commercial production, he guesses it could be shrunk down to just a few feet on each side, and it won't cost millions of dollars like standard MRIs. I imagine you could build systems like this for $50,000. Rosen thinks that inexpensive, easy-to-use MRI scanners could have a huge impact on medicine. They could allow doctors in emergency rooms, for example, to get a quick look at internal injuries. Just think about how useful the stethoscope is in the hands of a trained clinician, and now you're going to add to that all of the specificity that's available with MRI.